Today I wanted to talk about the stitch editor and the sequencer on this machine. I've always seen them advertised, but I've never actually found anyone who really used it much. But recently I had a project which uh, used, the, used it. So what I want to do is show you what I did with that particular project, and then we're going to create one together. So if I click on my favorites, and what I created was um, <clears throat> a spider motif. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit here so you can see. So this one here, you can see it creates a spider. So I was doing a spider themed outfit and I created that. But what I learned in the process of doing it was that it's not as straightforward or as easy as I had hoped to create something from scratch. And how I ended up achieving it with a little more success was the um, to create it in parts and use the sequencer to join them parts together. So what you can see here is a oop wrong one. I created the legs and then I created a copy of that and inver inverted it like this so you moved it to the other side so it was easy to join them together and then I created the body so I actually created the spider in three parts in order to make it work it was quite difficult but the sequencer allowed me to to do this and ultimately to create the, the successful um, spider pattern which I then used on uh, a shirt of mine but today I thought it'd be fun back out to create a pattern which allows me to sew sequins. So we've already got these built-in uh, elaborate maxi stitches. Not sure. So we've got all the maxi stitches in and uh, what you can do is actually you can embellish them if you wanted by putting um, sequins over top. So it would be done in two separate goes, but so if we imagine we select this one, you can see the big flowers, but if we, we could put a sequin in, in each of the, the flower centers or something like that, that'd be quite fun to do. But in order to do that, we have to have a way to sew the sequins. So that's what I thought we would do today, just for some fun. So I'm going to have to figure this out. I have a theory about how it, it will work but we shall try it out together. <clears throat> so, I have figured out how to create a sequin tack down stitch. So obviously if you were doing this for real you wouldn't use black thread but you'd use some sort of embroidery thread or invisible thread to not disguise that. But it took me a while to figure out what to do and I want to show you how it's going to work now. So if you go into the stitch editor and start with, as you can see here, let's see if we can move this in a bit. Very reflective, so I'm trying to figure out how to fix that, but ultimately click the insert new stitch, select them all and then move it over to basically the right. Then I know from the distance here that a sequin, the small sequins, are from the fourth mark across. Then what we want to do is add another stitch to the exact opposite side. Okay, and that will tack back. Now we need to go back to the middle. Not sure you can see this. I'm trying to fix this. back to the middle. 
so that's where you started. So now what we want to do is go down, and it's again four, one, two, three, four, oops, four down, because that's the size of the sequin. Then what we want to do is go back up to the middle, Okay, then we'll go up to the top, and then what we want to do is go down again. So it tacks it in the middle, and we'll add another one down to the bottom, and then what we will do is add little ones just to tie the stitches in. I found that trying to use the tie, the stitch tie didn't work so well, so you just add three small ones four small ones all on top of each other and then we're done so if we go back to stitch editor you'll see it recenters it at the top that will now work so what is the best approach is you want to go into the sequencer oops save that as a stitch in this case, I'll save it as 14. Because to put in the, stitch, the sequencer, you have to actually create it as a set of stitches. Now we can go into here. We can, oops, we can add it. Number 14 it was from the favorites. And then we can add a stop. And then we will have to, I found that this does not work properly. It only works at the very end for the tie down or to cut. So what we do is we put the stop and what that means is when we go to stitch this now, it will stop after each instance. So how I set this up, and I'll show you. I'll move the camera to the other side so you can see what's going on. So I, how I've set this up is Set the machine to the slowest setting, it just makes it easier. And, I mean, you could split this up or try to split it up. I just had a lot of difficulty with the sequencer to get it to work. Definitely stabilizer interfacing underneath, it makes it a lot easier. And then start stitching. Now, I've programmed this so it has tie down stitches at the beginning. So you see it's tying down, and then suddenly it's going to move over to the middle. Oops, I forgot to zigzag back and forth. Um, so I, should, I didn't do that one quite right. Butter. I'll use the one I created before because it works better. I forgot to go back and forth so it was easier to do, so let me do this again. in the one I showed you. So it goes back and forth and it's going to go back to the beginning. Now that's really important because that shows you where the sequence should go. Let's see if you can see that. That makes it a little easier. So the sequence should go right on that mark there. So what I found is really handy is just raise the needle exactly where you want it to be and then that will drop into it and now you can just press the foot and it'll do all the work for you. But I forgot to put that step for you and then I make it to the bottom and then it locks the stitch and then it'll stop. Then I can press the cut and a perfect result. So the important thing is that first bit tells you where to place the sequin 
and then the rest of it will do it. So I'll show you that again. Down. Got a sequin handy. Start sewing, locking the stitches. And go back and forth. Back and forth, All right? And now we can put the sequin in place. I find this is quite handy if you just lower the needle. And once it goes perfectly in, then you can press play and it'll just finish the job. And cut. So what that means is you can use the fancy stitches, the, the wide stitches, the maxi stitches, and then add sequins to it using this extra bit here. So you finish your stitches and then you can place this quite easily wherever you want. If I use gold or metallic thread, that show, won't show up and it'll look really fantastic. The sequins will be extra shiny and you won't see the stitches as much. So with hindsight, I think there might be a slightly easier way to do this. So the same principle to start. And if I put this sequin, oops, well maybe it's not quite as magical as I thought, but try it again. Hold the sequin on the needle, drop the needle. Ah, yeah, now you can just play and go. Magic.